Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It's 7.30 on June 5th. I'm glad you're able to be with me. If you're joining me live, fantastic. Glad you're here. If you're joining me later on in the day or a different day, wonderful. I'm glad the technology allows you to join me whenever you're joining me. So thanks for being with me today. So I'm still getting used to this new little interface uh, that Facebook has for me. I used to get to see the little eye count up in the corner that told me that people were here, but it, that's gone. So I'm assuming that this is working and uh, we're gonna go on our happy way. So um, if it's not, I guess I'll, I'll say this. I often say this to my kids when we get in the car. If you're not here, speak up. So uh, if you're not here, tell me so I know you're not here. Uh, but no, uh, so today I have kind of a different book recommendation, totally a different genre, one that is a little odd, but I like to read a whole different um, um, range of books on different topics and, well, I'll put it this way, I get questions on the whole gamut. I mean, you just would be amazed, kind of the questions that come my way. So here's one that I have really appreciated and actually have done, well, actually, I taught on this in confirmation for one of our lessons because this is a question that came up. Okay, so here it is. Um, alien intrusion. Whoa, you say aliens? Yeah, this is the book you definitely wanna read if you've ever had a question about aliens. Okay, I'll put the uh, book recommendation in the comment line. But here's, here's the question. I'm just going to ask the question. What if these aliens are not extraterrestrial, but extra-dimensional? That'll make you think, won't it? So if you ever want to dig into this alien question from a very strong biblical perspective and from a research perspective, this guy did years and years with the research and, and interviews and so forth, this is one to look at. If you forget about it when we're done here, email me, message me, and I'll make sure you know about it. But this one's different in terms of topic, but truly a phenomenal book that I would say, if you've ever had a question about that, this whole subject of aliens, uh, this is one you want to take a look at. <clears throat> okay, so today, I'm not talking about aliens. I want to talk about worry, right? It's a terrible feeling, right? And we worry about a lot of things. I mean, we worry about well, you can name a list, right? Our children, we worry about our government, we worry about our society, about war, about cybercrime, about finances, we worry about medical tests, what doctors are going to tell us, we worry about the weather. I mean, if we're good at anything, we're good at worrying. And that's a strange thing to be good at because, because it makes us sick, right? I mean, and I know it's not possible just to just not to worry, right? I'll, I'll just stop doing that. We need to do a little more work because uh, before we can make progress on this, uh, on not worrying, because simply not worrying doesn't seem to be an option that we're able to choose. So we need to do a little bit more work. So what's going on with worry? What is it that you're battling? Well, and look, I'm not an expert on worry, but from what I can tell, I think it's the realization that you're not in control. And that's a terrible discovery, but it may be a necessary one. So here's what I'm thinking of in the back of my, my brain. Uh, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He's, he's basically writing about the gospel and he says this, but we have this treasure, the gospel, in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So we have this gospel, we, have, we confess this gospel in breakable bodies, like clay jars, so that we will understand that we are not God. We are not God. That the surpassing power does not belong to us, to clay pots. It belongs to God. So I think there's something similar going on with worry. I think we're battling the realization that, that we're not God. We're, we're struggling with how little control we actually have in life. So Here's the image I have in my head, okay? So on occasion, I find myself in an airplane headed to a conference somewhere. If I happen to land in a window seat, 
I'm always fascinated by the scene beneath me, especially before we get too high above the clouds and so forth, where you can see the details on the ground. So I usually focus on one little car and I watch this little car creeping along the road headed wherever it's going. And I'll imagine that person in that car or the family in that car. I mean, they have their lives, they have their schedules, they have their hopes, they have their fears. They have the stuff they can control and the stuff they can't control. And then I think about it. And most of their lives are going to be lived in an area that, that basically I can see from the airplane, right? I mean, most of them will live lives in this little area that's big enough for me to see from this airplane. And, and just like the rest of us, they will worry about things that they can't control. I mean, they have the same lists. But it always strikes me as a little bit silly because we have these little bitty people driving these little bitty cars in this little bitty section of ground and they have these grand aspirations to control the world. I'm not talking about a rule the world sort of thing, but in an everyday way. They want to be able to control the outcomes of their worry lists. All right. But then it dawns on me. This is this moment I think, oh man, like this, this realization. I'm just a little bitty person in a little bitty airplane. And I start to think about my worries, about the things that I can't control. And I think, well, where did you ever get the idea that you could control these things? So here's my point. Control is an illusion. And worry is both a realization of this and the thing we try to do to exercise some control over the situation. We feel like we need to do something, so we need to worry. Let's dig just a little bit deeper on this, and this may get a little uncomfortable. We worry because we feel like somebody needs to do something because nobody is currently doing anything or they're not doing enough. And there may be some truth in that, but we forget where the surpassing power is. It's not in us. It's not. Jesus is Lord, and he is reigning. Worrying often reflects that we have forgotten this, or it's just really hard for us to accept this. Yeah, 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 Jesus is reigning, but... And as is so often the case in life, we would do a lot better if we just wouldn't say that word, but Jesus is reigning. Does that mean everything's going to turn out the way you want it to turn out? No. And let, let's say it didn't turn out how you wanted it to. Does that mean that Jesus stopped reigning? No. Would your worrying have changed anything? No. Well, you, it makes you sick, but wouldn't change the outcome. Jesus himself said in his Sermon on the Mount, which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? It's like hopping in a rocking chair and hoping to rock your way into town. Go ahead, give it your best. But you're not going anywhere. So what should we do? All right. Because the cliche, let go and let God, it may have some truth in it, but there's a reason why it's a cliche. So what do we do? Well, we need to replace our worry with truth. First, we are not in control. We are not the Lord over creation. But that doesn't mean that no one is. Jesus is Lord. So we need to rehearse his promises. There are some things that you don't and you can't and you never will control. That doesn't mean you don't have vocational responsibilities, you do. So go do them. But you're not God. You can't guarantee outcome. You can only control the input. And look, if you mess up on the input, and who hasn't? Welcome to the club on messing up, right? We turn to God for mercy, and he grants it for Christ's sake. Okay, so number one, we're not in control. Number two, Rehearse the promises of God and make sure you're rehearsing the promises of God, not the promises of the Joel Osteens, the Joyce Myers, and the Stephen Furtick's of the world. Their promises are myopic and they're short-sighted. They're all focused on your best life now. And that truly is a depressing thought. If this is our best life now, that's a depressing thought. Rehearse 
the cosmic promises, right? Renewal, resurrection, reunion. So claim a resurrection perspective on life and rehearse the promises of grace sufficient for each day to face the trials that are before you. So I want to make sure we're getting this because this is really important. We have to unlearn so much of the theological drivel that we've heard from so many crossless, resurrectionless preachers. We are not saying, just look for the positives in life. That's not what we're saying. There may not be very many positives. That, that may be the reality. We're saying, rehearse the promises of Christ. Stop listening to the crossless, resurrectionless, Christless counsel. And listen to Jesus. Rehearse his promises. He is Lord. Rest in his lordship. Okay, lots more to say on this. I think we, as so often the case in our 10, 12 minutes, you can't do it all. Uh, so we're just scratching the surface. You're always welcome to email, text, message, call, stop in. Happy to visit more about this. I know this is an area that we all struggle with. Hit your share button because I have a feeling that your friends struggle with this too. Have more people in prayer. So let's pray about it. Heavenly Father, King of creation, Lord of the cosmos, we rejoice to confess your cosmic reign over the universe. For we confess with shame the speed with which we forget this. So often our worrying is both our forgetting of your cosmic reign and our attempt to wrest the reins from you, our foolish attempt to control what is yours to control. For Christ's sake, forgive us. Turn our eyes to you. Show us your lordship by the working of your spirit through your word. Bring your cosmic promises to mind. Teach us to rehearse them, even to confess them out loud. Teach us to speak them into our lives. When worry begins to creep in, empower us to fight back with your promises. Help us to serve faithfully in our vocations and rest securely in your loving lordship. Thank you for your great and mighty promises of cosmic renewal and your loving and tender promises of grace sufficient for each day. Teach us to turn to this daily grace and then long fervently for this coming renewal. We are bold to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks for taking the time to join me, and I look forward to being back tomorrow at 7.30, and I encourage you to hit share so more people can, um, well, be encouraged by the word and be in prayer. Thanks.